Here's an overview of what a linear feedback shift register is and how I'm using it to create pseudo white noise with a 31-bit linear feedback shift register in an ATtiny85. There's different ways to configure them, but we're going to look at a specific application where we use XOR gates in a Fibonacci linear feedback shift register. A shift register is a string of flip-flops where the output of one is tied to the input of the other all the way through, and those connection points in between can also be used as data tap points. So data present at the input of the first flip-flop will get clocked to the output of that flip-flop when a clock pulse arrives, and whatever happened to previously be here, also being the input of the next flip-flop, will simultaneously get clocked along to the output of here, and so on, and all the existing data gets shifted over by one. Whatever was at the far end just disappears and gets replaced by whatever was previous, unless you connect it somewhere else and keep it going. The idea with the linear feedback shift register, the input data source is the output of some XOR gates. So to try and simplify what's happening here, for a linear feedback shift register, we need to XOR the bits of certain positions and feed the result of that back to the input of the shift register in such a way that this thing just keeps running as we clock it. The data will keep shifting through where the new incoming data is a certain XOR combination of the existing data. And when this is chosen correctly, when you look at this as a 16-bit number, this will go through every possible number that you can represent in 16 bits, except zero. We don't want zero everywhere because that will lock this up. The XOR result would also be zero, and we keep feeding zero in and going through and getting zero out. So doing it a certain way, you cycle through every possible number except zero until all the combinations have been reached, and then it repeats. It just keeps going on its own. So that's a maximum length shift register, and it's related to these XOR gate positions and the number of gates, representing a feedback polynomial that's primitive. We're not going to deep dive on all of that. There's tables that will tell you different combinations that you can use as tap points. So to do this in software, first we are using a 16-bit variable, in this case to represent a 16-bit shift register, and we initialize it with a non-zero number. It could be any non-zero, and then it should just keep going. And really these are the two lines of code that do the whole thing. This first line, we have another temporary calculation variable, and that does the XORing of all of those four bits in this example. So what we're doing is shifting all of these bits individually down into the least significant bit position. So we're basically stacking them all on top of each other, calculating the XOR of that, and storing it in that temporary variable least significant bit position. So here, we take our shift register, shift it over by whatever number is here, and that represents whatever position we want to calculate the XOR of. We shift them all over to the far right and XOR all of them together. That's what the up arrow does. And I don't think we need to do it in this case, but then they just mask it by anding it with one. What that means is one is down here and everything before it, however many bits you have, are all zero. So when you and a number with a zero, you get a zero. When you and a number with a one, you get that original number. So that cleans it up. If we ended up with all kinds of random zeros and ones here, we just set them all to zero and keep the one we care about. So this gives us the result of an XOR. The next line does the shift register clocking, where a clock is basically going through the loop again. So we go through the loop, and then we shift the bits in the register over by one to the right, just the same as if it was a string of flip-flops getting clocked. So whatever data happens to be presented to the input will get clocked into this first position. Everything else gets shifted over by one. Whatever was over at the far end gets lost. And since we want to take the XOR of these positions and feed it to the input, in our temporary bit variable here, we stored the XOR result all the way down here to the right. So now we're shifting it all the way to the left and ORing it with the shift register itself. So what that means is 
you take that temporary variables XOR, shift left 15 times, it ends up being up here now, and then you just do a regular OR of that bit with a zero because when you shift over and you create an empty space, it's automatically zero. So when you OR a number with zero, you end up with that number. And that basically places the value of this XOR calculation as an input to the shift register in this operation here. And we're generating this pseudo random number and making white noise. So this is the sketch I came up with. I'm using 31 bits. I'm only using two feedback taps for the XOR and using an ATtiny85. This is the board file I had to install to use the ATtiny. And in order to program the ATtiny85 on a breadboard, I used an Arduino Uno as an in-system programmer. So I referenced a video I did in the past on that. Here's my non-zero number to initialize my 32-bit register, of which we're ignoring one bit to get 31. So I'm doing that shift to get these tap points all the way down, doing the XOR, shifting the entire register over, and taking the output bit all the way back to the input, and taking one of these shift register pins, sending it out to the ATtiny pin, and that's my white noise. So when we get this ATtiny85 up and running, Here's what the white noise sounds like. And that's good enough for anything I'm going to be doing at least. So whether implemented in software or hardware with a couple of logic gate chips and shift registers, D flip-flops, this is a good solution to get reasonable results.